from England, we've seen some reports in Dutch media that suggests he's not quite as loved in Holland as he is in Liverpool. Nobody is there is. any truth in that? Or yes, okay. but nobody is. Yeah, we have a tendency in Holland to um, like. If you saw the documentary about uh, Beckham, for example, I think in England it's it's sort of similar. You build up players and then you break them down. In Holland, it's even worse. We don't even build up players. We just break them down straight away. And that's that's the mentality in Holland. It's like a really strange mentality. And it's also like, that's why we don't have Legends games. Welcome back to This Is Anfield. I'm Sam Milne, and today I'm joined by Sander Vesterveld, who won the treble with Liverpool in 2001. And he's going to be playing in the upcoming Legends match against Ajax. I'm guessing it didn't take long to say yes once he got the call. I think I already said before uh, before it was announced. I uh, put my name forward throughout the the, the last couple, the, all the, the the big teams in Europe we played. Um, I was always uh, pushing the foundation and uh, met the CEO. Like, okay, uh, we need Ajax. So can we play Ajax? So finally, we got uh, a Dutch team. And, uh, I started at FC Twente, uh, where I've been grown up, uh, um, and, and and that was my club and. Twente and Ajax is like uh, Liverpool and Man United, so you know the rivalry. So it's 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 a special game for me, and I'm really looking forward to beating uh, these guys as well. But so but maybe for the fans, we need a uh, we need to beat them like five four to uh, to see a lot of goals. Or oh, actually, five nil would be better. But uh, yeah, no, I really really need a good result as well. No, five five four would mean you've let a few in, so it'd have to be five. Yeah, that's why. That's why. I would only play a half, so I'll have to talk with Jersey about this. <laughs> and this time, it does something slightly special as well, because Sven Goran Eriksson is going to be in the dugout. What was your reaction when you heard the news? Obviously, initially it was sad, but then it must have been uplifting to see he was going to achieve his dream in a way. I'm really looking forward to uh, to meeting him at Anfield and seeing his face when he's on the bench, uh, when they sing "You Never Walk Alone" or they sing his name. Uh, it will be special for him, but uh, for us as well to see that. And moving on from the Legends game, Quiven Keller has stepped up massively as a goalkeeper. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts. Klopp said after the match he needs rhythm as a goalkeeper. How true is that from your experience? Uh, well, it, it, it is normally a goalkeeper. It's it's a um, it's a difficult position, uh, um, and especially a reserve goalkeeper. If you're a number two um, in Holland, we have a reserve competition under twenty threes. But uh, we also in the championship in Holland, uh, we've got the the second team of Liverpool and and, and Man United, for example, Ajax reserves and AZ Utrecht PSV Eindhoven. They all play in the championship with the under-23 teams. And when they play on, amongst the, uh, each other, um, they are allowed to play all the players they want. So all the older players as well. So the, the number two, who's older than uh, 23, is, he's, he's always playing games. So then at least you can have your, your rhythm and um, yeah, you train with the first team and then you're playing games. But it's so difficult for, for, for Kewin as well to, to come in and sit on a bench for like 10 games in a row and then suddenly, boom, play games. Um, so that shows how how good he is mentally because you need a mental state to uh, to perform. Um, so And you will be better by playing as well. If you play one game, it's really difficult to uh, get out and play. So you need a couple of uh, games to, to feel and get that rhythm. Um, obviously, he's, he's, he's still a young goalkeeper and uh, even Allison is making mistakes. So And Allison is one of the best in the world. So I'm really pleased. I'm not surprised uh, by the heroics he was he was making last the last weekend. Uh, I was there actually on the pitch uh, working for Dutch television. So I was really close, and I had uh, um, the luck of of talking to him in the tunnel afterwards and congratulate him. And uh, he's a he's a special player. And people talk about some people came to me after the game as well. It's like for him, um, isn't it better to go somewhere and play on loan or um, there's so many worse goalkeepers than him, so he can he can play in any team in the Premier League or in the Championship, and it will be good for him. But think about Liverpool. Um, I think this is the best situation for Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, if, if something happens now, um, you need more than eleven players. Uh, you need a whole squad, and I think this season showed 
that um, yeah we have a squad like even the youngsters that come in uh, they perform so we need two good goalkeepers so I yeah I hope he stays uh, at least well as a backup because um, I think I was in a situation when I was behind Van der in the national team I was there for five years and only played six caps I only have six caps and it's difficult to sit on the bench but if you're behind, if you're on the bench behind one of the best in the world that makes it a little bit easier and um, yeah if the new manager as well that comes in uh, gives him at least all the league of, uh, games and Ellison um, every season he misses a couple of games so he will play games at Liverpool and um, yeah, like like this year as well he he will win prizes and uh, that's for him as well uh, really important and he will be a better goalkeeper uh, in training with all those superstars in training so yeah well I'm being just uh, selfish uh, and uh, by saying I hope he stays but I would understand if he wants to go out and have more uh, more games, but uh, hopefully on loan so he can come back in the future. I think you've answered about three of my questions in one. Uh... Yeah, sorry for that. I'm um, <laughs> no, well known for talking hours. And you say there from a selfish point of view, from a Liverpool point of view, you play for a lot of clubs in your career. What What is it you think makes Liverpool special for you, different to the rest of the clubs? <laughs> But I heard, um, uh, um, I think it was Alan Shearer. Um, I was listening to the podcast of Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer and uh, Mika. Um, and Alan Shearer pointed out something that I thought, like, yeah, this is why I, what I talk about on television all the time. Uh, he said that he could see the difference throughout the whole game uh, between uh, the Chelsea team and not only the, the players, or, but the whole team, uh, the coaching staff, uh, everything around that Chelsea team. And Liverpool, that was that was totally different. The Liverpool, uh, they said that it looked like if you see the way everybody cheered, if you see Nunez jumping on uh, over boardings and 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 seeing them uh, hugging each other on the pitch, uh, seeing uh, Jurgen with the players and the staff, and it's 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 one big family, and it's everybody likes each other, and it's one it's such a strong vibe in the group, and such a yeah, it's 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 a special club. It's easy to, for me to say that Liverpool is the most special club I've ever been involved and in, it, but it is. And uh, I think you don't see clubs like this many in the in the, in the uh, world. And so it's every season. It's, it's something is is there that shows how big Liverpool is and what Liverpool is standing for. And also the work with the foundation we were doing is like giving back to the society in Liverpool. Um, uh, this year, we um, I think we have more than 120,000 people uh, by this Liverpool Foundation, and also for the players, the former players. If you see the lineup uh, and the players that are really want to uh, uh, play these games, uh, and not only for themselves but to help uh, and and give something back um, to Liverpool and to the to the people of Liverpool, that's yeah, that's special and. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that. That makes Liverpool different. That's what Liverpool is, and you never walk alone. Is 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 well, is is a phrase for Liverpool, and it's been made for Liverpool, and it's 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 everything that Liverpool, uh, yeah, is made of. And you mentioned Javi Alonso there. You haven't been on the phone to him recently, have you? I might have. I might have. I might yeah. be pushing him a little bit. <laughs> But uh, like he is in the press, he, he won't really let go. Uh, you know, I can't say. I, I, obviously, he's, he's, he's at Leverkus. So uh, even if he says in press conference, I really want to go to Liverpool, then he gets a problem at Leverkus. And he's probably winning the league there and, and making history because they never won the league. But Xavi, it's the same with Stevie G as well. Uh, at that time, when Stevie G was, was 19, when I was playing for Liverpool, I never could expect him to be as good as he was uh, going to be. Uh, and the same for as a football player. And I never, yeah, I could never imagine he, w- he would be a coach uh, one day. But the same with uh, Xavi. He was too young, I think. He was 18, 19, 20 when I was playing with him for three years. And I could see he was a special player. The way he was, he, he saw passes and he saw opportunities in the games. But um, it was just, uh, I think, a little bit too early to see him uh, as a coach or even as the, the world-class player he was.